What a lovely day to bake. Actually, there's no baking today. It's about science today. Moin, my name is Arne, German hobby baker who's living in Luxembourg. Today we make your first sourdough starter. If you already have a starter, why not try it with another grain? So what is sourdough? Sourdough is a dough composed of microorganisms such as lactic acid bacteria and wild yeast, initially formed by spontaneous lactic fermentation. Over time, a stable microbiological environment is formed that reacts perfectly with the flours used. Each new flour you use to refresh the starter brings new strains and changes your sourdough. Also, the amount of water you use can change the behavior of sourdough. There will be a video about this soon. The word sour is not only in the word sourdough, it's characterized by a pH value below 4.3. This makes the bread you make with it not only much tastier, by the often longer fermentation than with baker's yeast, the breads are easier to digest. Sourdoughs can be made from a wide variety of grains such as rye, wheat, spelt or buckwheat. But you can also make sourdough starters from each other grains such as rice or einkorn. The important thing is that you use the whole grain. Either you buy fresh whole grain flour or you grind the flour by yourself. Until you get the first bread you need about 5-7 to seven days. Don't let this put you off because you only have to do that effort once. You will find all the steps below in the video description. If you want to support me, please like this video, subscribe to my channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss the next videos. Thanks. This is from Luxembourg with Loaf, so let's get started. So welcome to day one of creating your own sourdough starter. You need a glass jar, you need 30 grams of whole wheat rye flour and you need 30 grams of lukewarm or a little bit warmer water. This helps us to activate the enzymes and actually this will speed up the spontaneous fermentation which we are aiming for. So, uh, you take a spoon and after mixing these ingredients, you um, mix them together so that all the flour and the water are incorporated together and that there are no dry uh, places inside your glass jar. So once everything is mixed together, this goes to a warm place for the next 24 hours. The warm place should be ideally between 22 and 28 degrees Celsius. Should not be warmer, but it should also be not very cold there. So day two. What you see here is you see some signs of fermentation. You see that the structure of that dough changed a little bit. You see some bubbles. That is totally what we want to achieve. So what we do now, uh, we of course smell it. Uh, it's not very pleasant right now, that's fine. Uh, what you do now is you add 30 grams of rye flour and another 30 grams of lukewarm water to the mix from yesterday and then you take a spoon and like yesterday mix everything together until the flour and the water is incorporated with your mix from yesterday. So I have a rubber band here on my glass jar. This helps me to mark how much rice I got through the night. 
And voila, day three. As you see, the door raised a bit. And that's what we want to have. Like this is 24 hours later than uh, yesterday. And what we do now is actually we change a little bit what we want to feed the dough with. And therefore I added you to the rye flour a little bit of wheat flour. So that's now 20 grams of rye flour and 10 grams of wheat flour or all-purpose baking flour that you want to later use to feed your dough regularly. And then also we take 30 grams of water. And like the two days before, we take a spoon and mix it all together so that we do not have any flour left in the jar. And then all we need to do is we update the mark of the rubber band so tomorrow we can see how active the dough raised over the last 24 hours. So welcome to day four and look at the sourdough. It raised not 100% but a good amount. So that's now when we change the feeding ratio. Before that we were still adding flour and water and what we do now is we change the ratio to one to one to one. Meaning one part of water, one part of flour and one part of sourdough. And I still feeding it with 20 grams of rye flour and 10 grams of bread flour or all-purpose flour that you're using later. So and then I take a spoon and take out 30 grams of my previous sourdough starter and after that I'm mixing all ingredients together. You don't have to discard that leftovers now. Uh, actually you can keep them and use them in a recipe like my chocolate sourdough discard cake. I have linked the video here in the upper right corner. And now it's repeating all over again. You use your spoon and mix everything together until flour, water and the young sourdough that you have created are perfectly mixed together. Afterwards, and I forgot to record that, use a rubber band to mark how much the dough level was. So the fifth day has come and as you see the sourdough raised overnight again 100% and that's a good sign. We are really close to finish that process. Once again we do exactly the same steps that we did yesterday. We take um, 10 grams of bread flour, 20 grams of rye flour and 30 grams of water and actually we mix it together with 30 grams of sourdough. So we still keep the feeding ratio of 1 to 1 to 1 but tomorrow this will change.
And guess what next comes? You have to mix all ingredients together. At this stage, your sourdough should raise in about 12 hours when feeding it with the one-to-one -one ratio. If not, please repeat this step until you get to that point. Don't forget to mark uh, the sourdough level with a rubber band. And voila, day six and actually not day six, but day five and a half because after 12 hours, my sourdough raised like 100%. So now I was able to get to the final stage and therefore I did two changes. Actually, I was using now a different kind of jar. Once with a lid that I can close and actually I am now taking 50 grams of water and 50 grams of flour. And that's the mix now from 20 grams of rye flour and 30 grams of all-purpose flour. So I already changed a little bit the ratio of my flour mix. And as I said before, you can in the next days or um, actually you can also feed the next time the sourdough starter uh, in about a week if you put it now in the fridge and then you can continue with only all-purpose bread flour. And then you only take now 10 grams of the sourdough starter. And this will be a mix of, or a ratio of one to five to five. So one part sourdough, five parts of flour, and five parts of water. And this will be now your final feeding ratio. So that's really easy to remember. One to five to five. This is all you need to know for the next years, decades, or until the rest of your life. This is how you feed your sourdough starter. I will create a video on how I maintain my starter and how you can do the same. And um, yeah, this will come during the next couple of months. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So after mixing everything together, don't forget to use a rubber band to mark the level of your sourdough. This will help you to have more joy at the next day when you look at your sourdough starter and see how much it raised. At this stage your sourdough starter should already smell a little bit acid. And now enjoy the time lapse of my starter at the next 12 hours. Wow, doesn't that look amazing? I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope your sourdough is as active as mine. As I said before, you only have to do this work exactly once. You can simply convert your sourdough from a solid one into a liquid one or the other way. You can turn your rye sourdough into wheat sourdough. I'll be posting several more videos here this year about this topic and also tell you a little bit more about the different types of sourdough. In the next video, I will show you how to bake a simple sourdough bread from the sourdough starter you just did. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. Did my method of creating your first sourdough work for you? Do you have any question? Leave a comment below. See you in the next video. Eddie and goodbye.